My brother talked about the geography of Kosrai in our last episode and how it shaped the natural beauties of the island. In this episode, we will take you on an around the island tour of landmarks of Kosrai. We hope to take your breath away like it did for us. The first amazing place we saw was the Yekala Waterfall. No matter how hot and muggy the day is, this 30-foot waterfall tucked away at the end of a rarely tracked path at the foot of the mountain will cool you down immediately, as the rushing water creates its own wind. It might not seem like a lot of water, but at the bottom of the fall, the water is pounding so hard that you can barely stand under it. The sound is deafening. Somebody piled some, up some rocks at the bottom to form a shallow pool. One can chill out at the pond and have spa shrimp eat your dead skin. There are even natural shampoo ginger going around the pond to put in your hair while taking a shower. But if spa life isn't your thing, as we island boys don't like to sit still, you can get to the top of the waterfall by climbing through the roots of a banyan tree. These massive trees are amazing as every branch will continuously send roots back down to the ground and form a web of sturdy trunks. Even the young roots are strong. They feel like piano strings. In parts, you have to squeeze through holes in the maze of roots, so little ones actually did better than adults with broad shoulders. At the top, you can even walk out on branches 20 to 30 feet above the ground that make your knees weak. It really reminds me of the trees in the movie Jurassic Park. Arlo, you would love it. There are many waterfalls on the island, but the most breathtaking one is the Tuffensack Gorge. The prettiest place in Kosrai, in my opinion. It takes two hours to hike to the waterfalls at the end of the gorge, and you can divide the hike into two parts. The first half can be done by walking along or on top of the town water pipe, amidst primary tropical jungle. The second half is walking up the riverbed in a narrow gorge with not a hint of civilization. You can't even help but say, Welcome to Jurassic Park. The second half of the hike really reminds me of the Narrows in Zion National Park. As you trek up the riverbed, there are many little pools that you can stop in and take a refreshing dip that makes you ready to keep going. At the top, you are rewarded with a deep pool and two huge waterfalls. One is even coming out of a hole in the cliff. Sadly, we cannot stay at the top for long because of the rain. Apparently, if it rains upstream, sometimes you can't even see the rain from downstream, the gorge can have a dangerous flash flood. That's why we couldn't go to the gorge whenever we wanted. However, the mysterious and dangerous nature of the gorge adds to its allure. If the Toffensack Gorge is the most beautiful place on land by our standard, then the Blue Hole is the most sacred place for the Koshrayans. It is a surprisingly deep pit in the otherwise shallow reef that surrounds the island. It is filled with fresh water even though it is in the ocean. The Blue Hole is actually the site of an underwater fresh spring. While the reef was growing all around the island, the low salinity around the spring prevented their growth, thus forming a deeper and deeper hole. Our friend Ochi took us to an island near the Blue Hole and we ate lunch floating over it on our kayaks. When we stuck our face in the water, we couldn't come close to seeing the bottom of the hole. This place is sacred for the islanders because this 
with the burial grounds for their kings. In some ways, I am glad I can't see the bottom. At the interface of fresh and salt water, there is another marvelous sight, the mangrove forest. The mangrove trees are trees that live in the intertidal coastal zones in the tropical or subtropical areas. They have massive, complex prop roots that make the trees look like standing on stilts when the tide is low. If you get close, there are also many spikes sticking out of the sand that are quite dangerous for those unsteady passengers going on wobbly paddle boards. The reason these roots stick out is to act like a sifter to get all the silt out of the water. So, they have nutritious soil. They are home to many small fish and animals. So these trees form a lively ecosystem that has been shown to be important for climate and eco-balance. Our new friend, Matt Rott, was kind enough to take us on a paddle tour deep into the mangrove forest. We started in Utwe in the saltwater bay and went all the way to here, where the fresh water flows in the river before the shallow bed turned us around. If you time it right, you can go with the current both ways. Go up the river during rising tide and down the river just as the tide turns down. The mangrove forest really reminds me of our tours in the flooded forest of the Amazon River. Just like in the Amazon, the waterways in the mangrove forest was used by the locals like highways. But unlike the Amazon, where the water level swings between high and low tide every six months, the water level changes here twice daily. Finally, my absolute favorite spot on the island is Hiroshi Point for snorkeling. As you get into the water from the shore, the reef bottom stays pretty shallow for about 30 meters, around six feet deep. Then the reef shelf suddenly drops off to about 15 feet or more deep, with many caves and crags to swim into. This place is home to so many colorful fish that we can't even identify them all, even on these posters about the reef fish of Kosrai. I even spotted a small black tip reef shark six feet away from me. We also saw a huge school of fish that looked like zebras of the ocean. As we gently swayed with the tide, I just wanted to stay in the water with the fish and watch them go on with their daily routines. That is why Hiroshi Point is my favorite place because of how much I felt at peace with the ocean here. I sometimes felt like a fish and I would take some small dives down to the colorful reef or through the crags. We went on many other adventures around the island thanks to Uncle Matt Simpson, Matt Rott, Ochi, and Carlos. We went night reef fishing spotting swung off a bridge on the tide below, jumped off towers so tall that my stomach hit my throat, explored bird caves and bat islands, searched for bioluminescent mushrooms in the pitch black forest at night, and drummed on the roots of buttress trees in the jungle. We owe many thanks to our new friends. Without them, we couldn't have discovered all these wonders on our own.